Hi, I'm Zoe. And I'm Nina, and today we'd like to talk to you about... Vocoders. You may recognise vocoders as the sound of robots singing, but they also use extensively within telecommunication, and even in music they can do a little more. Very little more. First off, let's briefly state what a vocoder isn't. There are at least two other ways to mimic singing. The first is the talk box, which was invented around the late 1930s, the same time as the vocoder. A talk box is basically a tube going from a speaker or amp into your mouth so that you can mouth the words while playing the notes on an instrument such as the guitar. Your mouth shapes the sound coming out of the tube the same way it usually shapes the sound coming from your vocal cords. This is what Stevie Wonder used in Close To You, and what Aerosmith used at the beginning of that sweet, sweet emotion. <laughs> the other way to mimic singing is auto-tune, which changes the frequency of a waveform on a micro level while preserving its overall shape on a macro level, using a lot of complicated programming. Auto-tune was released in 1997, and in the following year was used in Cher's Believe. But we're not talking about talk boxes or auto-tune today, just vocoders. As with most parts of synthesizers, vocoders were originally designed for serious applications and then repurposed for the comparatively frivolous task of making music. Vocoders allow communication with two main advantages. Sending the value of one pitch in about a dozen volumes takes up far less bandwidth than sending the full signal. Put simply, it saves space. The other advantage is that the handful of simple values can be encrypted and then decrypted at the other end allowing secure communication. But instead of following the original pitch of the person talking or singing, you can ignore it entirely, choosing a different pitch for your carrier signal. This allows anyone to sound like they're singing in perfect tune, albeit while still sounding artificial. On a side note, the 1930s Voda contained just the synthesizing half of a vocoder. An operator would manually change the pitch with her foot and 10 bands volumes with her fingers. This took about a year to get the hang of. Perhaps it's best to stick with the automated full vocoder that analyzes as well as synthesizes. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What are all these bands, volumes, analyzers and synthesizers anyway? Vocoders work by analyzing one sound, measuring the volume of its different frequencies, or bands, and synthesizing them onto another sound, changing the volume of the different frequencies to match. To demonstrate this, I'll need two sounds. The first should have a lot of variation, say somebody singing, and the second should be rich in harmonics for us to manipulate, say a sawtooth wave. Did someone say rich? Hey Dougie, uh, while you're here, would you do some singing for me please? Well, I suppose I could, yes, for nominal fee. N -n -n nominal, you must understand. Alright. <sighs> yep. Yep. Gratefully received. La 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 la. I am singing for you. Yes, yes, that should do it. Thanks, Louis. Every sound is made up of lots of different frequencies. A vocoder uses a bunch of band pass filters to slice up the sound into parts called bands, each band covering a small range of frequencies. It then continually measures the volume of each separate band. This roughly analyzes the sound. Huh, that's pretty clever, isn't it? Well, yes it is. Now for the synthesizing part. I'll need another sound, one that constantly has lots of frequencies. A sawtooth will do nicely. The other half of the vocoder similarly slices up this second sound into bands and changes each band's volume to match the first sound. This roughly synthesizes the first sound on top of the second one. So the vocoder imposes one sound's characteristics onto another sound. The more bands you have, the clearer the vocoder sounds. About 8 to 16 bands is usually a good amount. As far as the terminology goes, the sound we're analysing or copying from is called the modulator, because it modulates or changes the other sound. The sound we're synthesising or copying to is called the carrier. It's usually best to copy from a sound with complex, constantly changing frequencies, such as a voice, and to copy to a sound that has a clear pitch with lots of harmonics available to mould, such as a sawtooth wave or a narrow pulse wave. To clearly hear speech and singing, higher frequencies are the most important ones. Some vocoders have an extra high pass filter to let the highest frequencies pass straight through from the source sound to the target sound unaffected. Some other vocoders simply make the higher bands a bit louder than the lower ones. Some sounds you make with your mouth don't have a pitch, such as the letters S and F. 
When you made these sounds, you briefly stop using your vocal cords altogether. The most advanced vocoders can tell when you're doing this using a voice unvoice detector that works out when you're making harmonic sounds and when you're making noisy sounds, and at the appropriate time, switches between two different carrier signals, say a pitched sawtooth wave and unpitched noise. These occasional bursts of noise provide a very distinctive voice, which to my ears sounds more menacing. Kraftwerk use a vocoder with a voice to unvoice detector to play radioactivity live. Another advanced feature is to let you slow down or even entirely stop updating each band's volume. This lets you slow your singing and even pause it mid-syllable so you can sing in possibly long notes. Ah, allow me. Huh, how about that? Only a few vocoders offer these kinds of advanced features. One was made by EMS of Putney fame in the late 1970s, another was made by Dofa in the 1990s. More popular and user-friendly vocoders have a built-in keyboard and synthesizer to generate the carrier signal. These all-in-one devices are much easier to use as you simply have to plug in a microphone, hold down some keys and sing your little heart out. No messing around with wiring up multiple sound sources, unless you want to delve a little deeper, and certainly no patching up of dozens of cables. Hmm, which input should I wire up band 1's output to? Oh, 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 oh yes, I, I think band 1's input. Vocoders are a perfect match for paraphonic synthesizers such as string machines. Remember, a paraphonic synthesizer uses multiple oscillators to play multiple notes at once, but they're combined to share a single filter and VCA. When it comes to synthesis in general, this can be a bit limiting, but when it comes to vocoding, you only have one voice anyway. So it's a perfect match. Two of the most famous vocoders follow this approach. Korg's VC10, which looks quite similar to their MS10 and MS20 synthesizers, and Roland's VP330, which can also more directly play string and choir sounds. Both the VC10 and the VP330 are particularly useful for musicians who just want to get things done, allowing you to play whole chords while singing without having to connect anything besides a microphone. This makes the VC10 and VP330 ideally suited for vocoding backing vocals, as you can record all harmonies at once. The VP330 has been used in that Phil Collins song that I forget the name of, but it's all intro. So what else can you do with vocoders besides sing like a robot? Well, you can vocode any sound onto any other sound, so it's worth experimenting. Make sure your modulator, what you're vocoding from, keeps changing frequencies, and your carrier, what you're vocoding to, has a lot of frequencies present to sculpt from. Vocoding drums is often cited as a second thing to do with vocoders. For a good example of that, check out the opening to Underworld's album Second Toughest in the Infants. Use your imagination, experiment, and see what other vocoder uses you can find. Sure, probably most things you try won't sound that good, but when you stumble across a neat idea that no one else has ever tried before, it'll be worth it. So remember, vocoders are a fun novelty, but limited niche appeal, they're no substitute for singing lessons. The more something that you should use sparingly, like stuffed toy animals. Hey Nina, do you want to play us out again? That, that went well. Um. I've just been asked to do an intro with no preparation. <laughs> I don't know where it'll even go into the video. <laughs>